Renaming one of our Metro's newest arenas. Why isn't the Independence Event Center not good enough anymore? And why is Silverstein Ice Center's arena so much better? We're joined by the Mayor of Independence and Lamar Hunt Jr., the new owner of the arena's biggest tenant, the Missouri Mavericks. Plus, in our reporter roundtable, want to buy the Country Club Plaza? It's up for sale. Clinton in town? Is Prairie Fire in trouble? And kicking it up a notch on transit? Does buying up a rail line mean commuter rail is about to finally happen in Jackson County? Welcome everyone, I'm Nick Haynes, our reporter roundtable straight ahead. But first, one of the big epicenters of news in our metro this week was in Independence, Missouri. And it is my great honor today to announce that we are now the Silverstein Eye Center's Arena. Six years after its opening, the Independence Event Center gets a new name in a rights deal worth $2.75 million, the 5,800-seat arena has placed host to masses of major concerts from Bruno Mars to Ariana Grande. It's best known as the home of the Metro's minor league hockey franchise, the Missouri Mavericks, which earlier this year was bought by none other than the son of the late Lamar Hunt, Lamar Hunt Jr. He joins us on the program, along with the mayor of Independence, Eileen Weir. Thank you so much for being with us. You were elected last year. Is it too late to say congratulations? Not at all. Thank you very much. Well, 18 months in office uh, this month. So. And you you still have a smile on your yeah, face. That's, in, that's incredibly yes. impressive. So why was there a need to change the name at all? There was a lot of pride in calling it the Independence Event Center. That was a location that people could identify with, with your city. Why change the name? Well, of course, we're very proud to have this asset in Independence. I feel that Independence sometimes is a little separated or excluded from the greater Kansas City metropolitan area. So I do think that this gives us an opportunity to have more of a regional brand to let people know that they're welcome to come over and enjoy what we have going on at the arena. Of course, naming rights deals are typical and, and common in sports franchise and other uh, event centers. So we've really had this in mind since the opening of the arena to identify a naming rights partner to help us to brand the center and also to help us with the revenue that, of course, it brings substantial revenue to the operation as well. Now, you own, as, as a city, the Independence yeah. Event Center. Uh, are you subsidizing it? We are not subsidizing okay. it with our agreement with Spectra Venue Management. Um, we don't have any subsidy for the event center. We um, have not subsidized it at all through the uh, city's general fund. You know, when it first opened, and we were right there with our cameras when it first opened, and we were talking at that moment in time about bringing in about 500,000 people a year coming into the event center. I mean, are you still attracting that many people? We are. Between the um, the arena itself and the community ice, we well exceed 500,000 visitors to that location every year. And the Missouri Mavericks is one of the biggest draws there, of course, on a yearly basis coming to the, to the event center. And you... Oh, start, you began to own the, the team in February. And what amazing to me, Lamar Hunt, was that I, I, I saw it written about you that you'd never actually been to a game uh, until you actually bought the team. Yet you, what, so why did you want to buy the team? Well, well, I had been to a lot of games that earlier that season as part of the due diligence. Uh, why did I want to buy the team? I would say I love sports. Our family loves sports. We looked at it as a community asset. We felt like they had done what they needed to do to really make a statement in the community. We had considered looking at other minor league opportunities within the Kansas City area, and I thought, look, they're doing it well. Let's see if we can make a deal. You know, I was also, as part of my due diligence, one of the first people to go to a Missouri Mavericks game when it first opened. And then the headlines about that, 5,760 screaming fans at that first game. Are you still attracting that kind of a crowd to the game? Yes, we, we, we sell out about two-thirds of our games, and I think that's what we projected for this year. Obviously, you have challenges on certain weekday nights, like a Tuesday, but we do things like two-for-one Tuesdays to get them in the door. Your goal is to try and grow the game of hockey in this community. What are you trying to do? What are you actually doing to achieve that? Uh, the first thing we did was get an affiliation with an NHL team so that we, we know we're getting really good players, consistent players. We're tapped into their scouting system. 
uh, and, and our coaches are part of it. In fact, our coaches right now are up in Bridgeport, Connecticut as part of the training camp. The other thing that we did was to grow the youth hockey. We wanted to solidify, unify it under the Kansas City Youth Hockey Association umbrella. Got to get my acronym right, KCYHA. Um, and we've done that. And there, there's some growing pains there because I think you're, you're dealing with a lot of different factions who had a lot of different points of view. And then the third thing that we're, we're doing and we're working on diligently, in fact, I just came from a meeting, is developing new ice for the Kansas City area. We need more sheets of ice, we need more activity. We have a demand for it. And believe it or not, that demand runs from very little, small kiddos all the way up to the adults who've relocated here, who grew up around hockey and playing hockey. So why isn't that here right now? You know, Pepsi Ice Midwest closed a few years ago in Johnson County. It's First of all, there are very few places you can go, and it's very, very expensive. It's not like soccer, where they are sprouting up every uh, five minutes, it seems, with new fields. It is, it is a more expensive sport to play, but the the people that play it are very passionate. We have about a thousand youth players, and I don't even know how many adult. Uh, we're a large market. We ought to be able to do it. That would be my answer in short, in a short sense. Uh, there's a demand. I mean, people don't want to play at three in the middle of the night, so we need to do it. We also think we can attract travel hockey and make it a center in the United States for travel hockey teams. It's a natu natural crossroads for that. Now we should make it clear: your brother Clark is in charge of the Chiefs. You don't have any role with the Chiefs organization, but you call him up and say, hey, I, I've got some advice for you about the Chiefs? Uh, well, he's the CEO, but we have an advisory board, a family advisory board, and we, we all meet very regularly. And I'm, I'm actually vice president of the Hunt Family Foundation, which is through the Chiefs. So we, we all swap ideas all the time. We're both all pretty active. So does he call you up about, hey, I got some adv advice for you about the uh, hockey team? Actually, what he said the last time we saw at a meeting, he said, please send me the hockey schedule for the Mavericks. I want to come to a game. So that was good. That, that's a positive. Now, as mayor, though, the, the independent Event Center is only one of your concerns. I mean, this is the second largest city on the Missouri side of the state line, the mm -hmm. fifth largest city in our entire metropolitan area. It does get short thrift, as you've already made mention of. It doesn't get as much exposure from the media. You've been mayor now for over a year. What is the biggest challenge that you face, Mayor Weir? I, I certainly think that is perception, uh, and Lamar and I have talked about this as we're trying to co-promote the Mavericks and the Silverstein Arena. It's interesting to me, I, I feel that sometimes people in independence feel that that's exclusively our problem. But as I've been involved as mayor in regional discussions about Kansas City, it's really a Kansas City issue. And something that comes up regularly is the perception of our region as a whole as not being a major player in the national and global markets and the economy. But I think that independence has suffered somewhat from a perception issue that we are some far away land that's very removed from Kansas City when in fact we are just, it's nine miles from courthouse to courthouse. We're a very thriving community that has tremendous access to all the assets. Well, I was surprised. I, I came from KCPT Studios yeah. to the Independence Event Center. It took me 17 minutes. Yes. I was surprised at how short the distance that was. But what are you actually doing to change that perception? Things, like I say, being much more visible and active in regional activities as mayor, I believe that my primary role is to really raise the profile of our city and make people aware at how much we really have to offer in Independence and to be a a larger part of that regional conversation. Well, you've been mayor, I said, so you're a new mayor, but you're also a new owner of a, a hockey team. What has been the surprise to you that you didn't anticipate running a minor league hockey team in this market, Lamar? There are two things that have surprised me sort of on the fan level. There, there are some incredibly passionate fans who are going to hold on to their season tickets no matter what, and we've got a pretty good base for that, probably upwards of 1,800 season ticket holders. The second thing that surprised me, again from the fan level, is the number of groups outings that we can organize around the team. I can't quote the numbers off the top of my head, but it was it's fantastic. The headaches, um, gosh, we'd love to be able to spend more on players. Uh, you know, uh, we, we have, you know, workman's comp is always a You don't challenge. have $2.75 million more because of this naming <laughs> deal to buy more players? Actually, we don't. We, okay. we, we share a, a percentage of that, of okay. course, but we have a hard salary cap and things like that, so we have to live within a collective bargaining agreement. There's, but there's a little bit of a headache there. Uh, we'd love to have some designated players, and if, if, if ECHL owners are watching, and they may not be, we would like to push that idea of having designated players so that we could 
have players that stay around for multiple seasons that relate to the fans. We're a little bit, there's a lot of turnover that's going to go on with the hockey team, especially when you're affiliated with an NHL team. And it's, sometimes it's difficult and challenging for the fans to connect with that team. Something just looking through your biography, I was very surprised by, uh, but nine seasons as a flutist for the Kansas City Symphony. That I is Lamar that. Hunt Jr. I did that. Yes. And you're also a licensed counselor working with abused teenagers and adults with addictions and families in crisis. I Again, did that. something most people might not realize. Yeah. Do you ever pick up a flute or a counseling today? Uh, did you bring your flute with you today? I did not bring okay. my flute with me today. As I said, I'm on the Kansas City Symphony board, and as I said the other day, I'm a washed-up flutist. Okay. Uh, I do play occasionally at our church and things like that, and, and I played for a daughter's wedding and things like that, which was kind of interesting to do. Uh, as far as the counseling, only my wife and I do, um, and she's a former social worker, uh, we prepare couples for marriage, and we're, it's one of the best things we get to do. Mayor Weir, I have to say, if I, we do hear a lot from viewers from Independence, and they're a very vocal bunch, and we're very happy yeah. for that. But something we've heard in the headlines over the last few weeks, you go, oh, the uh, city manager in Independence is, is forced out, it's an abrupt departure. What on earth happened? They wanted transparency. What did happen? May we? Well, I, I would not say that it was an abrupt decision. Um, we can see in the last couple of election cycles that the citizens of Independence have clearly spoken that they are looking for a new way of leadership, a new way of do, doing business in Independence. And um, we certainly, um, the city manager has a long list of accomplishments of things that he has done for Independence, including the Independence Event Center, which was, you know, under his watch, he was able to achieve that and bring the Missouri Mavericks and the Comets to our city. So he truly had a wonderful, long and successful career in independence. Um, we came to a mutual separation agreement. We've fulfilled the terms of his contract, and that took a little bit of time and, and discussion. So we're very excited about our future and moving forward. Lamar Hunt, you have been now the owner for about eight months. Are you now ready to bring an NHL team to our metropolitan area, which is what a lot of people are asking you? I do get asked that a lot, and I don't want to I don't want to poo-poo it, but I think it's unrealistic at this time for Kansas City to consider an NHL franchise. Uh, we need to develop the world of hockey and, and grow a bigger piece of the pie for the hockey audience here, and that's all really I can say about it. It would it would be a it would be a reach for the community. Lamar Hunt Jr., owner of the Missouri Mavericks, and the mayor of. Independence, Eileen Weir, thank you so much for being with us on Week in Review. Up next, we review the rest of the week's news with Vokrot and Helling. You're watching Kansas City Week in Review. From the newly redesigned Kansas City star, Dave Helling is with us, and Steve Vokrot from The Pitch. Before we delve into some of the other stories of the week, you know, the Independence Event Center getting a, a name change is surprising to me because it's one of the newest arenas. When we had all those stories not so long ago, Steve Vokrot, about, oh, Arrowhead Stadium was going to have a name change, and uh, Kauffman Stadium was going to have a name change. In fact, they were even naming it to Arvest Banks uh, Stadium. They even had a name for it. Whatever happened? Well, they just haven't come to fruition. I reported uh, back when I was at the Business Journal a few years ago on a proposal that uh, U.S. Bank and the Royals were talking about uh, an agreement. It even got to the point where there were, uh, uh, there, there were some renderings of what it might look like if U.S. Bank was name was festooned on the stadium. These things are complicated deals. Uh, because of the amount of money involved and the details and the length of the terms, and uh, they're just hard, they're much harder to pull off for the higher profile stadiums and arenas than uh, some of the more intermediate level. Uh, Even facilities. for uh, Sporting Kansas City winning the U.S. Cup this week as well, uh, that they couldn't even pull off a name change there. Yeah, I'm a little surprised that that one hasn't picked up a new deal yet. Uh, I assume it's probably going to be a matter of time. They had that Livestrong. Uh, Frankly, it was a debacle from a few years back, and it's just remained Sporting Park. It's been uh, it's been a little bit odd, I would say. Well, one of the big stories of the week, up for sale, one of Kansas City's most iconic landmarks, the Country Club Plaza, Highwoods Properties, announcing this week it's putting the 90-year-old retail mecca on the market. Why, Dave Helling? 
Well, the company said in a release, pretty tight-lipped, said in a release that it uh, had purchased some new properties in other parts of the country and needed to sell the plaza, the assets on the plaza, as a way to pay down some of that debt. And more broadly, I think High Woods has always been a little uncomfortable with its overabundance of retail in Kansas City, and certainly the plaza is a retail destination, much more than office buildings. So I think that High Woods also wants to move back into that sort of core competency in part, Nick, because let's face it, uh, destination shopping in a digital era is going to be under some pressure. I mean, the idea of driving somewhere to buy a pair of shoes or a new handbag uh, is not what it once was, uh, as opposed to office space, which is a pretty stable uh, pursuit. So I think that's why they're selling. You know, some people said. complaining this week, well, at Highwoods, I mean, the, and they hadn't owned it forever. It's only been like 17 years or so. There was a 90-year-old institution in this right. community. Uh, but, oh, well, there's been too many national chains coming in, a good riddance. But, well, I mean, this could have huge implications, though, for Kansas City with this sale. Right. We don't know who the next owner is going to be. And Highwoods has gotten a lot of criticism for bringing in the, you know, the national retailers, but you really have to think about the finances of retail to understand why they've done that. It's not, I don't know that it's necessarily to cheapen the plaza, but the amount of rent they need to charge, it's in the value of that land, it's not conducive to, you know, the mom and top pop shops from, from yesteryear or years, uh, years past. That's just a financial reality of what they've needed to do. Um, as far as their, you know, as far as their sale, I think Dave's right. I mean, they do need to pay off uh, the debt for these new acquisitions. And if you look at the plaza in the context of Highwoods' portfolio, it's a bit of an outlier. I mean, they tend to be more suburban, more office type uh, developments in Highwoods' portfolio. And I think this, uh, I think the plaza may have always been a little bit difficult to manage for Highwoods. But the other thing to keep in mind is. Kansas Cityans are highly protective of the plaza. And Highwoods may have been a little frustrated by the uh, zoning and other restrictions. And I think, Steve, you've written a little bit about some of this stuff, that, that, uh, that there, you know, the regulatory environment for the plaza was going to be difficult. The margins are difficult because it's retail and, and restaurants and entertainment. That margin is always pretty narrow. And it really, as Steve suggests, didn't fit into their overall portfolio. The bigger question is who buys that property? There is some hint, and it's just a hint, that Highwoods may already have a buyer in mind or be negotiating with someone because they said they were going to close by the first quarter of next year. That's pretty quick for a property of this size and potential cost. So it may be that they've already had those discussions. Uh, and, and, and as a final note on that subject, it'd be fascinating to know what they're going to get for that property and what the value well, is. Well, speaking of retail and entertainment districts, is Prairie Fire in trouble? It's the splashy new Johnson County development with a dinosaur museum, pinstripes, and the Cinetopia, Cinetopia state-of-the-art movie theater. An extensive news story in the pitch this week claims signs of financial distress are beginning to peak from beneath the surface, including a recent disclosure that the city of Overland Park has been dipping into a reserve fund to help pay the interest on bonds for the Prairie Fire development. And the Prairie Fire Museum just took out a $2.5 million loan to help fund operating costs. Since its opening last year, the development has brought in more than 400,000 visitors, the developers say. So is there really a cause for alarm? Well, we'll have to see. I mean, this is, uh, you know, this, these recent disclosures are uh, kind of a stake in the ground, and we'll see how things go. You know, if the, the, the reason that the development had to dip into a reserve fund is because the revenues that were generated within the, the, the district were not enough to make a full payment to the bondholder. So they go into this savings account, which there's about a million dollars left after this latest draw. And... Sometimes when that happens, not always, but sometimes that is a sign of concern for, uh, for retail development like that. So we will see uh, as this thing moves along. The developer, uh, Fred Merrill, who's a well-respected developer in Johnson County and elsewhere, tells me that part of the problem he sees with it is that the Cinetopia movie theater complex there uh, may have been hurt, the traffic there may have been hurt by some tactics that AMC has reportedly deployed that the Justice Department appears to be investigating, where they negotiate with studios to get exclusive rights on certain blockbusters within a defined radius. But if the, that development is not meeting expectations, are Overland Park taxpayers on the hook for that, or is that the developers were on the hook? The developer and the bondholders, in this case, okay. are on the hook. So not the taxpayers themselves? Not directly. Okay. Uh, Clinton in town this week. No, not Hillary, but former President Bill Clinton. 
There's his motorcade. Where was he headed and why? Dave Helling. Uh, he was going to Leewood uh, to the... Just up the road from the Prairie Fire Development. That's okay. right. Maybe he stopped by there and saw a movie. We don't know. Uh, <laughs> because it was closed to the press, that was fairly clear early on. Uh, but he raised money for the Hillary Clinton campaign at the home of a longtime friend and supporter named Roshan Paris, who you might know. Um, as far as I know, he was in and out. As I say, we didn't even go out because the, it was very, made very clear to us that we were going to stand on the corner, and that was about it. I, I said to my wife, oh, that the, Bill Clinton was going to be in Leewood this week, and she said, oh, does he really, ha does Hillary Clinton have a chance in Kansas? And I said, it was nothing to do with oh, no, politics. This was all about money. money. Oh, it's raising money, and that was very clear. $2,700 for a picture. $5,400 got you, uh, got a picture and your kids if you wanted to bring them along. I mean, it's, uh, you know, she's out raising, trying to raise a lot of money, uh, and that's an important part of a presidential campaign, and that's one of his main jobs. Well, next, kicking it up a notch on transit in our metro, does buying up a $55 million stretch of rail line mean commuter rail is about to finally happen in Jackson County? County Executive Mike Sanders tries to paint a picture in announcing the purchase this week. Imagine being able to leave your seat at the top of Arrowhead Stadium and get home by train before most cars leave the parking lot. We've watched billions of dollars flow from our gasoline tax that we pay every time we put a gallon of gas in our tank to go to communities all throughout the United States to pay for these rail systems. It's now our turn. Hmm. So I'm at the Chiefs game and I'm going to get home on a train before other people leave the parking lot. Is that what's going to happen as a result of this deal this week, Steve? Perhaps someday. I mean, Perhaps someday. Okay. Well, I mean, it, 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 it's... A, this line for that stretches from Truman Sports Complex into uh, Lee's Summit has been a highly sought after uh, rail line by Jackson County. It would have been a critical component of what uh, was a broader vision that Mike Sanders had for a multi-county transit plan that he had that's kind of stalled because of the difficulty involved in acquiring rail lines from the companies that own them. So, you know, this this, this is a step forward in the possibility that, yes, you could take the train from Arrowhead to, uh, to, to Lee Summit, but there's still a lot that needs to happen, including finding some uh, more funding for this, uh, for, for operating something like this. Uh, well, and, and, and presumably and another tax on, ta on taxpayers. Which has been tried several times, as we know, and only passed one time and then was uh, abruptly thrown out by the council. Uh, and I think, Mike, in, in that soundbite you heard, was implying that somehow, Mike Sanders, that the federal government was now ready to pony up for mass transit, which is just not the case. I mean, they, they can't even pass a highway bill for highway construction. There is some uh, Yeah, but that was under a different speaker. Now things are different. No, no, and of course, they're trying to get a deal on a highway bill. But for Kansas City or Jackson County to believe that it can get a significant amount of construction or operating funds from the federal government for mass transit, light rail transit, I think is really aggressive. It may take a decade or more for that to sort of get back to whatever level you might want. That, you know, some people will tell you, Nick, that that ship, to mix my metaphors, has passed, that there's just not going to be the kind of federal money that there once was. If we're going to do it, we're going to have to do it here. Okay, so the advice this week is to still take your vehicle and purchase um, a pass at the parking lot of Arrowhead Stadium. Uh, for the Royals, too, which okay. they're going to play. Right. Um, Arrowhead Stadium, by the way, playing host to a different crowd this weekend. The American Royal Barbecue, the event which began 36 years ago in the parking lot of the Golden Ox restaurant in Kansas City's West Bottoms, this weekend takes place for the first time at Arrowhead Stadium, which is also the venue for the American Royal Parade. Are people in the West Bottoms wearing black armbands this week, Steve Ockra? Yes and no. I think, you know, this, uh, this move to... Truman Sports Complex has been more or less brewing for for a while. Uh, to the extent that it hurts the West Bottoms, I mean, I've heard from some people in the West Bottoms who think it's not a huge departure for them. Um, it'll be interesting to see what the character is like uh, in, in the new setting, because the, the West Bottoms has always sort of had this special feel to it. Um, but perhaps the parking lot at Truman Sports Complex will take on a, a, a separate sentiment of its own. There was talk that the American Royal was just going to move completely anyway and never come back to, to the West Bottoms. Do you think that this is the end of that now, Dave? The barbecue, I would guess, would not come back to that area. The American Royal itself, I think, uh, will be around for a while, although, as we know, that's still a bit of a uh, discussion item. 
the very idea of an American Royal, of a livestock exposition, of, a, of an October and a November with parades and horses and all that F, F.A., all the other stuff that used to go with it, I do think is under some, some jeopardy, Nick. I, you know, times move on. We're not what we once were 50 or 100 years ago here. Well, well finally, sparks fly this week at City Hall over whether to put the convention hotel to a public vote while petitioners have the legal number of signatures to place it on the ballot. There's little appetite for letting voters decide at City Hall. One council member, Teresa Law, walks out of a closed-door meeting after a shouting match with the mayor over the issue. So the new council... Not willing to sing Kumbaya with the mayor on this, Steve? Well, not on this necessarily and not on uh, all issues. I mean, this is, uh, I think there is a sentiment among some members of the new council that this agreement got rushed through before the new office holders could, uh, after they were elected, but didn't take the oath of office. This got pushed through right before that happened. And they have to deal with some of the issues that linger from it. And I don't think they were necessarily happy. At least a few of them were not necessarily happy that this happened. Is the convention uh, hotel deal now crumbling in some part? Well, I don't, not crumbling, but I mean, I, you know, and, and frankly, deals like this always have hiccups along the way. This may not be unusual in that regard. But, um, you know, the idea, Nick, of a government by a referendum is here. I think some members of the council feel some pressure to honor what the voters want or the signatories to the petition want. The mayor doesn't like that idea. And, and what I think he's learning and what I think is important for us to understand is this is not a council that's going to quietly acquiesce to everything Sly James wants to do, and maybe that's a lesson he's learning, too. Before we leave you, would you like to be on TV? You can be, as we take our cameras out next Wednesday night to tackle the thorny issue of health care with former Health Secretary Kathleen Sebelius and a broad ideological split of experts as we partner once again with the Village Square. Now the American Public Square. Dinner is at 5.30 Wednesday night at UMKC's Pearson Auditorium. Reserve our, your seat at American Public Square at AmericanPublicSquare.org. If you're struggling to write down the details, it's on our website. And that's our Week in Review. Thanks to Steve Vokrot from The Pitch and Dave Helling from the Kansas City Star. From all of us at KCPT, thanks for spending part of your weekend with us.